Hey everyone, Brandflex here, back with another Eternal Return video. Today I want to do a quick short guide on Nikki. I think she's pretty popular, but I think she's very underappreciated and people like to lowball her viability just because there are a lot more stronger feeling tanks such as my Estelle, Eleven, and Lennox out there. I think she can compete with them, but you just have to play her very well and understand how to build and, you know, navigate fights. So I'll talk about Amp Nikki and I'll talk about Tank Nikki, um, just because they played a little differently and I do think both can be viable if you approach it correctly. I'll go over her skills very quickly just in case you've forgotten them. Nikki's passive is going to be her Rage Bar. Basically when you get hit, you're going to generate some Rage and it's going to be scaling off your max HP. So the more HP you have, the harder it is to gain full Rage. When you gain full Rage, you're going to get a lot of attack speed and you're going to get a pretty big on-hit buff and you'll also double your damage in your ultimate, which is an important note in case you're playing Amp Nikki. Her Q is a charge dash skill shot, which will knock back the first person hit. If you knock back something, you'll gain her second cast, which gives you a lot of rage and does a lot more damage. That rage generation is based off skill amp, so if you're going tank, you won't get as much rage from hitting it. Her W will be her parry, which will force you to dash in a direction that you choose if you successfully parry. The parry itself is a pretty good damage mitigation button, but you have to remember that when you dash forward, you don't have that damage reduction anymore, so you're actually very squishy. So you have to be careful with what direction you choose to parry in. If you do parry successfully, you do also empower her E. Her E is going to be a line skill shot nuke. It will do a lot of damage and slow if it's not empowered, but if it is empowered, it'll do even more damage and stun. Her ultimate is going to be a targeted knockup that has a pretty good range. Um, basically, you charge towards them and you hit them really hard, even harder if you have full rage, so always try to use ultimate if you're going to be raged or if you already have rage. You can use it to force a fight, but you'll do a lot less damage if you do that. So to talk about Amp Nikki first, um, she's going to be a pretty standard mage. You're going to play pretty heavily around her Q and E, and I would honestly recommend leveling her E into W first. I know that a lot of Nikki's enjoy leveling Q into E because like it feels a lot better to spam Q a lot, but I think that a lot of people are playing Amp Nikki incorrectly in the fact that they should be focusing on going backwards instead of forwards. Obviously, if you're going to be winning a fight or you think you're very far ahead, going forwards can be correct, but I think going backwards has a lot of extra flexibility that you wouldn't ordinarily have if you always all-in commit. So before we get into all that, I want to talk about our augments really quickly for Amp Nikki. Amp Nikki can take Vampiric Bloodline, Diamond Shard, or Amp Drone. Amp Drone being the most all-in version and the most experimental version. Bloodline is always going to be good because you cast a lot of skills and you will really appreciate the healing. Diamond Shard is going to be very good because it lets you all in and be much tankier while you're alling in. Amp Drone just gives you way more damage on your ultimate and again if you have that full rage your ultimate will absolutely slap. If you're taking the Red Tree I'll recommend taking Animal Reaper for general damage and utility and then I think Spirit Culling or Stopping Power would be your other choice. Spirit Culling if you don't want to make drinks because Nikki's SP costs are very high, and then Stopping Power if you're confident that you can make drinks and set them in every fight. If you're taking the Blue Tree as Amp Nikki, I recommend taking Cavalcade and Dull Blades just for general mitigation because it gives you a lot of damage reduction against auto attackers and in general. And if you're going to Green Tree, I would always take Thorn Shackles, and then you would have to decide between Assembly or Penny Pincher if you want that shield or discount on the store. For her attack skills, I think if you're going to plan on running in all the time, Blink and Protocol Violation are very very good options, um, just because they give you a lot more defensive stats and mobility, respectively. If you're planning on diving in a lot, then I recommend going Totem and Protocol Violation, just because those allow you to get a lot of defensive stats basically for free. And if you're going to play more flexibly, Blink is a pretty good option. So Totem might be a surprising option for a lot of players, but I think Totem is very very good because of the level 3 version. If you have Totem level 3, you can hit W and then E and then press Totem to cancel the skill animation for E and then immediately W out of that, which gives you a lot more stalling power and gives you a lot more casts as well. So I think Totem is a pretty good option in general as well, but obviously much better if you're diving. Blink doesn't really need an explanation, it's going to be very generally good because you can go in, out, or escape very easily. And then protocol violation is pretty much exclusive to when you press R. Um, Nikki does keep people pretty easily in the protocol violation if you center it as you're starting your crowd control combo, so it's very easy to get the damage reduction or the defense reduction on it, but obviously the HP increase is very, very welcome as well. Again, with the playstyle, I do think people should be focusing more on the potential to peel, especially with so many mages and AD carries being a lot more popular in the game right now. 
Obviously you can still all in, but I think you'll find very quickly that all inning feels very bad because you do end up getting focused so quickly, and you really only have one form of damage mitigation, which is a very good form of damage mitigation, but once that's out, you're a very squishy mage in the front where everyone can hit you. So peeling is very good because Nikki's damages are very, very high, and the frontliner or the diving melee usually won't pay attention to you as you're running forward and casting E on them, so they get stunned very easily, and then if they're stunned, your teammate can help slot them very easily. So I don't think you really need an explanation on the Diving Nikki, it's the most straightforward way of playing her, but if you are playing Diving Nikki, just again, be aware that your W needs to be used on the scariest ability coming at you. You have to hit Q, you want to use R only when you're full rage, and then you really just want to be careful because you're probably going to die, so if you have a way to get out um, after dumping your full combo, you should probably look for it. So Tank Nikki is a much more experimental version that I've been playing with, it actually isn't very amp focused, it's a lot more auto focused, but you're still casting your abilities to peel and just generally be a nuisance. Um, unlike Amp Nikki, I've been running Smolder Fist, which might be surprising because Nikki doesn't have the greatest auto attack reset, but you can auto attack a lot, and especially if you don't cast Q2, you have a lot of time to sneak an auto in there, and because of how Smolder works, it doesn't actually care how often you auto, it just cares how fast you can auto in a certain given period of time. So if you queue onto someone, auto and then de-skill and then auto again, that's already 3 stacks of smolder, which is going to start burning and then allows you to hold Q, charge it, and then slam them again to refresh smolder stacks. So I think it's a pretty underrated item on Nikki. It's usually just a very bad choice because permafrost does give you a lot more damage and better scaling on abilities, but as tank Nikki, you're not really dealing damage with their abilities, you're just trying to use them to block and soak damage. So I think tank Nikki does have a few options when it comes to um, upgrades. I do think you are allowed to go stuff like Mythal Tindalos and Glacial Shoes to just make your CDR look a lot nicer. Obviously it's not true tanky at that point, but I think the CDR is very important, and especially since you're tanking, you want to have your W up as much as possible. You can always go like full mithril with smolder, and then that also caps your CDR out and gives you a lot of defense and HP. But I do think it's a lot less flexible because it does require so much more of an expensive build. The build that I've been trying out recently, which is like smolder fizz, blazing dress, um, dwarf helmet potentially, mithril tindalos, and glacial shoes, is a lot cheaper because you're working with mostly tree items. Whereas mithril woman Nikki is going to be almost all mithril, which is like plus 200 credits, which isn't that much if you're playing a carry character, but if you're playing a tank character who's supposed to be with low econ to begin with, it can be very annoying very fast. My recommended augments for tank Nikki is going to be Sentinel, just because it allows you to take the blue tree, which includes Embolden, which is a huge boon for tank Nikki. The way that the Embolden and Sentinel cooldowns line up is very nice, because you'll always get the Embolden proc on your first Sentinel tick, and then you'll always get the Embolden proc on your third Sentinel tick, which is going to be very nice in general mitigation and fight longevity. Um, with that said, shall I explain the sub augment choices? So for the green tree, you're going to want to take um, Thorn Shackles, and I've been taking Penny Pincher just to make my build even more affordable, because again, very low econ style way of playing. Assembly probably is going to be very good. I haven't tried it yet, so I'll get back to you guys on that one. For the blue tree, you're going to be taking Embolden as mentioned and Cavalcade. I think Embolden is a much better version of Dull Blades and um, Steadfast because raw defense is very good in this game. But since Nikki doesn't actually have innate healing or shielding in her kit, Sentinel is the only source of it. So if you have Sentinel, then Embolden is very easy to use. For attack skills, I think Totem could be interesting, but I think the best value is going to be Protocol Violation because you have more tank stats, and because you're diving and standing on people, you'll always get the value out of that, unlike Amp Nikki where you have the chance of dying randomly. I do think that um, Totem, again, is optional and Blink is, again, very good, but Protocol Violation just scales so much better with uh, Tanky Nikki that I think you should always take it. I think the way that you're playing Tank Nikki is going to be always, it's going to be pretty much the exact same way as Amp Nikki, but you're so much more flexible in your choices because you can sit in the frontline a lot longer. I do think that you're going to be a lot better at diving frontline because you can actually live the burst and stay there this time, but obviously you're always allowed to peel back and peel for your damage dealer because your utility is very high value. You also function a lot better as a solo frontliner as Tank Nikki because you can actually peel backwards and not die instantly because you have so many tanks that's to back up your abilities. So yeah, 
that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Um, pretty low effort video because I've been having a lot of tech issues today and I just want to get something out for you guys today and just be done with it. <laughs> the, the encoding overloads have been a problem that I think are solved, but then once I solved that, there was a DaVinci Resolve issue where it lagged all the time. So yeah, I hope you guys appreciate the video and hope you have a good night or a good day wherever you are. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.